best stories in sports. This is an E60 feature presentation. Swing and a miss, he struck him out. The only knuckleballer left in the major leagues, R.A. Dickey throws pitches that float and flutter, dart and dip. When his knuckler's working, it's dancing for Dickey today. It's nearly unhittable. When it's not, it gets crushed. And it's out of here. Hitting it is a challenge. Throwing it is an act of faith. The knuckleball is very unpredictable. Although the movement is chaotic and severe, if you throw it right, it's a beautiful thing. And that's how I view my life. For Dickey, at 37, life has been chaotic and severe. Even now, the memories are painfully vivid. For decades, the darkness that consumed him could not be lifted. Although I was victimized, I felt like I played a part in it somehow. And all the while, you know, you've got, at eight years old, you start having demons that start haunting you from early on, you know, and they continue to do their work over the course of your life. Growing up in Nashville, Robert Allen Dickey loved playing catch with his father. But by 1983, when he was eight, Dickey's parents had split up. His father had moved out and his mother was sinking into alcoholism. One night that summer, a 13-year-old girl babysits. Alone together in a bedroom, she tells Dickie to take off his clothes. What did she do to you? Um, she, she took off uh, articles of her clothing and, you know, she, she told me to get in the bed and then it was, uh, and then, then I, it kind of goes dark. I remember what it smelled like to be that close to another human being and being in places that were dark and, and it just uh, confused, incredibly confusing. Over the course of the next few months, Dickey says he was repeatedly molested by the babysitter. Why do you say you think? Fear. I think fear is the emotion that gripped me most. You just fear like in some way it's, it was your fault or, you know, you're going to be alienated because of it. You know, you're not going to be loved because of it. I felt like less of a human being is what it comes down to. I felt like less of a human. And that's hard to feel like that. When you're eight years old. Yeah, eight. Yeah. Years old. It was also during the summer of 1983 that Dickey spent a day out in the country. Playing ball near a shed on his grandparents' property, he was approached by a teenage boy. My first thought was, oh, you know, I'll throw him the ball, you know. And he took me behind that dilapidated shed. And I just remember him undoing his belt and unzipping his pants and, you know, holding me down and you know, I, and I do remember maybe yelping or saying something, but I mean, I was in the backyard and there was some land there. And I mean, I don't, obviously no one heard and I just closed my eyes and I remember probing and, and parts of the body that I could, I could identify, you know, touching me and, and, you know, like trying to penetrate. And I knew right when it was happening that I would never utter a word of it. And I knew I had a place to put it and stuff it away. When you think about that eight-year-old boy out there, you know, in the country, what happened to him? Well, what would you want to tell him now if you could? If I could go back, I don't know if I'd want to tell him anything. I think I'd just want to hold him, you know, and say, it's going to be all right, you know? it's. I think I just want to sit with him. I certainly know that in that moment, what I had hoped for, and it was for somebody to come and, and just hold me and say, you're not damaged. 
you know, it's awful what's happened and we're going to get through it and it's okay to talk about it. And, you know, I mean, you don't think about vengeance. You don't think about retribution. You don't think about, you think about how can I be healed from this? How can I, how can I get to the other side of this? To fill the void he was feeling at his core, Dickey immersed himself in sports. In high school in Nashville, he was a star quarterback and pitcher. In college at the University of Tennessee, he focused on baseball and was named an All-American. Dickey goes 11 innings for the win! In the summer of 1996, he pitched for Team USA at the Atlanta Olympics. He was also expecting to be selected in the baseball entry draft. His plan was to spend some of his bonus on an engagement ring for his high school sweetheart, Ann. There was a lot of hope put in that draft, especially when he had done so well. And, you know, you're seeing your buddies you know, get their million dollars. And he was really excited, kind of on cruise control at that time. Like, why wouldn't it work out? In the draft's first round, the Texas Rangers selected Dickey 18th overall. They offered him an $810,000 signing bonus but a routine physical raised concerns about Dickey's elbow, and he was sent to see renowned orthopedist James Andrews. When the MRI was done, it, it didn't show an all the collateral ligament. In other words, the ligament didn't show up. Of course, when you throw a baseball, that's where the stress goes. It's the main key to the elbow in the throwing act. Andrews had never seen anything like it. Either Dickey had been born without an ulnar ligament or long ago it had atrophied and disintegrated. The Rangers rescinded their offer. The analogy that I sometimes give is it's like winning the lottery and, and losing the ticket. I would spent a lifetime dealing with a, with, with a feeling of, of feeling like I was damaged. And here I was actually being called damaged goods, you know. Um, and there was a, it was a metaphor for other parts of my life that I was never you know, revealing to anybody. Eventually, the Rangers would make Dickey an offer for only $75,000. He took it. Then he embarked on a baseball odyssey that would see him spend most of the next 12 years in the minors. Together, he and Ann, who had become his wife, just scraped by as they built a family. There definitely is a pattern throughout his career of, oh, it looks good, oh, crash, oh, it looks good, oh, disappointment. By 2005, when he was 30, Dickey had lost so much of the velocity on his fastball that his future as a pitcher, it seemed, was all in the past. His only hope was a pitch that he threw only occasionally, a pitch the Rangers called the thing. Well, we decided as an organization that, you know, R.A. as a conventional pitcher is probably not going to be making it back to the big leagues. But then we talked about we have an idea. And the idea is we'd love for you to become a knuckleball pitcher. We'd love for you to take a shot. Dickey committed himself to throwing the knuckler. And in 2006, the Rangers rewarded his commitment by naming him one of their starters. His debut in the rotation was historic. Historically bad. On April 6th, in three and a third innings against the Detroit Tigers, he gave up six home runs, equaling the modern day record. Back to the minors he went, again. I was tormented uh, and in a lot of pain because the one thing that I felt had given me a lot of my identity, I felt like was on the precipice of coming to an end. It was also at this time that Ann discovered R.A. was having an extramarital affair. She kicked him out of the house. I found out that he wasn't this man that I had put all this trust and hope in and everything that I thought was a certain way, got ripped out from under my feet, you know, quickly. Hadn't shared it, you know, about the abuse with anybody, and so I was in a real place where there wasn't, I didn't feel like there was much to look forward to. You know, I hated the broken human being I'd become. I hated the fact that I felt like I would put a certain face on in one place, but I was really somebody completely different. Now having reached his lowest point, Dickey decided to start seeing a psychotherapist. Soon, Ann took him back. 
Then, on a road trip to Omaha in June 2007, he decided the time was right to follow through on an idea he'd been drawn to for years. He would attempt to swim across the Missouri River. I was unhealthily looking for some validity um, and some way to feel like I, I was worth something. The current was so strong it forced Dickey to turn around midstream. It took all his strength to avoid drowning. I remember getting out and really wanting to embrace the mentality of how could I live in the moment well, whether it was on the baseball field, as a husband, as a father, as a human being, as a friend. Reborn in the river, a few months later, Dickey finally felt secure enough to reveal to his therapist the secret he'd kept for 24 years. There's a lot of tears that day. There was a lot of grief, a lot of anger. You know, he was angry with himself. He was angry with his God. He was angry, you know, with his, with his parents. He was angry with the abusers. There's a lot of anger in him. I'd been hiding the truth for so long and been dishonest about a lot of things. And so if I was going to live differently, then I, I needed to tell the truth. And there was just something more childlike, more playful, more um, uh, naive and genuine and sincere about him after that day. When I started to risk talking about uh, the stuff in my past, um, it freed me up to take risks as a professional. From 2007 through 2009, Dickey continued to develop his knuckleball, learning to trust it and throw it for strikes. At an age when most major leaguers are winding down their careers, Dickey was still growing. I would be myself with it. I would throw it harder. I would change speeds with it. And knowing that I had something to offer the pitch and had my own personality with the pitch, things started to turn the corner. The breakthrough came in 2010 when he joined the New York Mets. Struck him out. In his first season in New York, he was one of the most effective starting pitchers in the National League. He won 11 games with a 2.84 ERA. At 35, R.A. Dickey had arrived. R.A. Dickey has thrown a complete game of one-hit shutout. Over the last two full seasons, Dickey was 11th in the majors in ERA. He signed a two-year contract worth $7.8 million. This offseason, he continued his journey of healing. First by climbing Mount Kilimanjaro to raise funds to combat child sex trafficking. Then by publishing his brutally honest memoir, Wherever I Wind Up. Being sexually abused does not define who I am. And for a long time, it did, you know, and, and now it doesn't. Show me your knuckleball. Nice. For Dickey, at 37, a father of four, life seems in some ways just to be beginning. Thanks to the knuckler, which puts almost no strain on a pitcher's arm, his major league career might be just beginning too. How does the pitch that you are mastering reflect the life that you're leading? It's been a journey that's been up and down and sideways, and, but at the end of the day, I really have the hope that it's going to end up in the right place, like a well-thrown knuckleball.